Exchange Engineering Team. So welcome Jason. So we've done a lot of work in terms of the app model. On the garage itself, we've talked about the client experiences, the SharePoint experiences, but today we want to focus on Exchange, OA, and Outlook. Right. We've got uh, five sessions at MEC around extensibility. We've done a lot of work uh, over the last year and I'm excited to show that off and talk about that today. So in the next 15 minutes we're going to show you new tools, how to build apps to really uh, manifest themselves inside of email, inside of calendars and uh, contact safely and securely using things like OAuth to be able to get to data inside of your calendaring, calendaring data. Yep, we've got a great show today. So, but first, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false, it is possible to grant an application read access scope to just calendar data for all users in an organization using OAuth and Office 365 REST OData APIs. Great, a bit of a mouthful, mouthful of a question. We'll have the answer at the end of the show. Yeah. Sure. All right, so in terms of our app model, I was going to take a second to kind of explain the way that the app model works. So first of all, when we think of the app model, we have basically our tools across SharePoint, Exchange, and Office. But we also want to be able to extend those to have native experiences that we can actually use our, our company data, our company, maybe our line of business apps with that. We might be using services like SAP, Dynamics, Windows, Azure, Bing, et cetera. And really what the app model does, it says, let's take the extensibility layer from managed or trusted code on these different platforms and let's move that so we can consume essentially web services and connect the dots between our SharePoint exchange and office consumption points. So the app model really sits in the middle, providing the connection between these services and the endpoints in, ter in terms of consuming those, right? Yeah, I think uh, Jeremy does a good job of talking about the kind of high level uh, overall cross office view of how we think of the app platform. And we're gonna drill in to talk about Exchange and Outlook specifically and, uh, and how those fit into the overall app platform. But let's explain how these apps actually work because the apps actually consist of a few different components, right? Yeah, that's right. So you can think of everything starting with Exchange. Everything starts with Exchange. Pen initialize, there we go. Okay, so here is uh, Exchange. Uh, Exchange is a central point for apps. All apps install into Exchange via a manifest file. That manifest file, just a simple XML file. That manifest file gets downloaded to the client and we'll just call this Outlook. This can be any Outlook. This can be Outlook Desktop. This can be Outlook Web App. This can be uh, OA for, uh, for devices. Right. That, uh, that manifest, once it's downloaded, simply points back to a cloud service out here. So you can think of this as your service. And that service can be internal, external, it can be a public or private facing cloud hosted thing or it can be in your intranet. It doesn't matter as long as those paths resolve from that device to be able to get to that web service, it can be anywhere, right? That's absolutely right. And you can think of this just like uh, a standard web page on your intranet portal or your extranet. Uh, this is just HTML and JavaScript, HTML5 JavaScript, very simple web development technology that then gets downloaded into the client and starts executing uh, in the client and actually augmenting the user experience. So the good thing is it works on-prem and also in the cloud in Office 365. And the other cool thing that you mentioned briefly was even my OA for devices apps, the great thing there is I can kind of build the code once. It's, it's able to be consumed across the browser, across the OA for devices apps, and across my native Outlook clients. It's kind of one of those build it once and I can update it centrally and all of those different clients will see it. Uh, that's absolutely right. The right once, run everywhere promise is really true here. Uh, it can run across all those clients. Uh, in fact, it's install once, run everywhere. You install it into Exchange for all of your users with literally one click and it runs in all of their devices. I think the mobile uh, running on OA for devices is extremely exciting. Uh, we'll show that a little bit later today. Right, and let's, let's uh, stop talking about this and stop talking about the architecture of it and actually see all of this in action. So Sounds good. are you ready to show some demos? Sounds good. All right. Other chair? Okay, so uh, what I've got, uh, if you bring the screen up here, 
Uh, okay, you, got, you can see on the screens there. Uh, I'm sitting here in, in uh, OWA, uh, Outlook Web App. I could be sitting in Outlook as well. It would show up just the same here. You can imagine for this scenario that I'm a financial advisor. I get a mail in from a, a client. Probably a pretty standard mail about uh, wanting information about taxes. I probably get this mail, this mail 100 times a day or at least a week. Um, now we have an app which is built on our app model uh, out of the box. This My Templates app. Uh, we shipped this with Exchange 2013 SP1 uh, as a demonstration of the app platform, but also a very usable, useful uh, uh, extension to Outlook and to OA. You can see I can come in here, and I've got a bunch of tax resources that, uh, as a template that I've created, that just have a bunch of links that uh, I can go click on and insert directly into the message body. So this is an example of an, uh, an app augmenting the compose form. Uh, this is an out of the box one. Let me show you something that I could then send this right off and say, you know, here you go. Uh, let's see, here you go. And hit send. And simple, easy. To now, uh, here's another example. This is a little bit, little bit more uh, advanced. You can think of this as a standard line of business scenario, where again, uh, I'm sitting here in Outlook Web App. Now, a couple of things. I get a mail from this, uh, this person uh, uh, who's Greg. I do not know a lot about Greg, uh, but I can come up here and find there's a LinkedIn app. And this is an app that LinkedIn's built. Uh, you can use their same extensibility points. We shipped this in 2013 RTM. Uh, and it actually goes off and uses LinkedIn to go find information about Greg Jones, who happens to be a principal design manager here at Microsoft. Um, in this case, though, I'm going to actually use a Compose app. I'm going to come over here to my line of business application. Uh, uh, and it's going to be this advisor assistant. This is an app that I've built for my internal, uh, my internal organization. Um, you can see that it brings up here a set of funds. This person is asking for some mid-cap fund recommendations. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click on mid-cap funds, and you can see a set of funds that are also populated to the top recommended funds. Uh, a couple of things to notice. While I'm doing this, you can see that down at the bottom, uh, it's actually billing some time. So I'm hooking up to the CRM system, billing to Greg Jones's account. I'll integrate it in because I do everything in Outlook. Why do I need to leave to go do this kind of thing? I can come up here to uh, this fund, and I say I'm going to suggest the Acre Focus Fund. Uh, you'll find out that you know, uh, basically I've uh, developed um, uh, you know, an, the app so that it can go add an attachment, which is the uh, prospectus here, added a chart into the mail using full HTML uh, fidelity of the message body, and then some information about the fund. And I can say, you know, this is uh, the fund I'd recommend. So uh, example of a uh, you know, very simple uh, line of business application that can be built on this model using HTML and JavaScript. This was literally written uh, in, in a couple of hours. Uh, and it's got full access, as you can see, to even like the CC uh, line there. I added a, another uh, distribution list to go, um, to go uh, uh, talk to, you know, to go include on the mail. And uh, to show that we can do more than just you know, insert text in the body, I'm going to go prepend a greeting, which says, hey, Greg, great to hear from you, and hit send, and I'm good to go. And look at the, the amount of time that I've, uh, that I've saved here. Right. And if you're not a developer, maybe in the audience, what does it look like in terms of building out the manifest and the code to get that web service consumed? Yeah, let me go ahead and uh, show you that. So I'm going to show you this straight from start to finish just to show you how simple it is and to show you that I'm not uh, doing anything uh, tricky here. I'm just going to bring up Visual Studio 2013. Uh, bring, it comes up here. I'm going to go down and just do a new project. I'm going to select App for Office. Just to leave all the defaults here. I'm uh, going to go down here and select a mail app. You can also add these to, uh, uh, to Excel and to PowerPoint in the uh, very same way. So just to explain the three different app types, a task plane app is basically one that nests on the side of the screen, whether it's in Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Content app inside of Excel will be actually an app that's running in the spreadsheet itself that can interact with the data, read it, or also write to the data. The mail app is just something that runs inside of all the different mail Outlook clients and the Outlook rich as well as the online clients. That's exactly right. And uh, you can see here I've got some choices. I could do an email read form, a compose form. Uh, I'm going to choose to uh, just leave uh, the defaults as they are. I'll hit finish. So this is going to create an app which will show up both in the read form as well as in the uh, compose form. And uh, we'll give it a second here as it goes off and creates the uh, project. This is actually, I think, the, the, the longest part of the demo here is waiting for it to go off and create the project in Visual Studio. Uh, it makes the whole uh, provisioning and everything else so much, uh, so much quicker. But the nice thing is, is even though it took a couple of seconds, it's already written all the code for you to get started. So you can start reverse engineering this. You can start adding to it. 
That's it's exactly really right. Easy. And you yeah. can also start publishing and playing with it pretty much instantly. Yeah, so I just hit F5 to start the debugger, and I'm just going to go log on as that uh, user that I had there um, for OA. And this is really cool because even if I'm not the Exchange admin in the sense that I wanted to start testing this, I can, I can have my own mailbox show this out to me if I'm, say, the dev. Yep. Once I have it all built and designed and ready and tested and validated and ready to go, then I can package it up in a nice, in a nice bow and give it to whoever's provisioning the app on the Exchange side, and you'll be able to uh, have every or have the users who you want to use the app use the app, right? That's absolutely right. You can be uh, any user can go back and do this. You just have to put your password in correctly, which I which I uh, failed to do. It's not that good that it can uh, uh, recover from that without requiring a, a right password. But uh, absolutely, anybody can go and provision these apps uh, immediately. You'll see this app that comes up here. All I have to do is now log in as myself. You see that actually it's gone out underneath the covers, found my Exchange server, authenticated to my Exchange server, provisioned the app. Just for you, though. Just for me, into my mailbox. These apps uh, live in my mailbox when I install them for myself, so they roam for me for on all my devices. And uh, you can take a look here and see that. Uh, let's see if this app is showing up. Yep, you can see this Office app, too, which is the one that we just created, pre-populated with, uh, with some JavaScript to go get the subject and the recipients. And then you can see similarly up here, uh, we're going to have a Compose app as well. If I were to hit Reply, there would be a Compose app that would show up here. And you could start playing with this you know, immediately in Visual Studio, start tweaking it to get it to like you, how you like it. And uh, you've got an app that's right there, functional in Outlook. So it's literally that easy to just get it up and going. Really cool. And part of the benefits of this model as well is it's going to show up even on your Android device, right? Yep, that's absolutely right. So, and, uh, and as we mentioned, and as you might have been paying attention with the trivia, we could even set up different OAuth hooks back to things like the data that we want to be able to uh, hook into in order to populate some of these things. So let's show the phone app first. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, this is again OA on Android, just, as you might have seen a little bit earlier. Let me just okay. full screen it like that. There yeah. You go. So this is imagine I'm on the road. I get this kind of query. Uh, very common, the traveling uh, businessman, and you won't have to wait till you get back to your desk to actually get back to this customer. Uh, you can uh, very quickly see add an app, the advisor assistant app. Can come in here and select the funds that I wanted to use. It says it's been added, just like before. It builds down at the bottom. You can see it there. If I go back here, you can look. Wow, it's added the attachment. It's added the pre-populated text and the links uh, down here in the message body. All from my phone. Hit send and go. So incredibly powerful to think about uh, enabling your line of business applications in the context of, uh, of your uh, mobile users uh, in mobile OS. It's no longer the case that you actually have to go build a separate app which has mail and calendar and your line of business functionality in it. To get that integration, you can do it all inside of uh, OA for devices. Really cool. And we've also done some work around uh, OAuth and claims-based auth around these apps. So why don't you talk about that for a second? Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about uh, all the stuff I've talked about previously. Uh, we did with uh, uh, Office 2013 SP1. It shipped on-prem. Uh, on premise. Uh, this work I'm going to talk about now, we just lit up in Office 365, announced at the SharePoint conference. Right. Uh, and this is really uh, the first time we've had true uh, OAuth uh, claims for Exchange, ability to really grant very granular permissions, like just read my contacts folder for all the users of my organization or a subset, or read my calendar. Um, and we released our OAuth along with our OData REST APIs. So standard REST APIs across Office 365 that give you access to mail, calendar, and contacts. So if I go in here to my expense report app, I'll bring it up here, you'll see that I'm asked to log in, log in with my Office 365 credentials. So I will uh, log in here. It's going to take a second as it, uh, it logs in. Hopefully the network is, is not too... So I think the important thing about the, in terms of the claims-based claims auth support is that the claims are basically just what you are given an authorization to do. It's not able to read all of your mail, your calendar, your contact list. You're giving specific controls over here. You can see all the things that this particular app needs permissions for, right? Yeah, this particular app was a, uh, a written to actually do everything. So it's got all, the, uh, all of the different uh, permissions listed. But you can be as granular or uh, as broad as you want to be in asking for permissions to your, for your data. You should really feel good about now you can actually secure your, your, your you know, customer data by just giving out the permissions that the specific app needs and no more than that. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, we want to be able to uh, read messages in the calendar, read messages in the inbox, read uh, contacts. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say OK and grant this app permission. 
it's going to get an OAuth token. You notice my credentials are never stored on this device. So you don't have to worry about uh, users walking around with corporate credentials stored in your line of business apps on their devices. It gets, it gets an OAuth token. That OAuth token is, uh, is all that's stored on the device. You can see here, I can come over to uh, look at the due dates that I may have coming up in this expense report app, and you'll see I need to file my MEC expenses by the end of the week. This was pulled directly from my calendar using the REST APIs and the uh, OAuth uh, uh, permission to access and read my calendar. Right, great stuff. So we saw how the apps can basically connect our web services together with our endpoints. We saw how basically any, any device, whether it's the full you know, Windows browser, in any of the support Office 365 browsers, by the way, can actually view all this content and be able to use the apps themselves. And from a development standpoint, Visual Studio making it really easy to quickly build the code in order to enable this. But you can use any developer tools to get these apps up and running, because it's basically simple XML manifest, Java, HTML5 at the core. And really, anybody who's developing apps these days has those skills. So from a skill set perspective, it's a great thing that you don't have you know, maybe tented very very small uh, set of, of individuals who can write maybe VB code or, or you know, some, of the, some of the lesser known capabilities of extending Office, but the web developers can go and extend not only Exchange here, but also SharePoint and the clients themselves and really provide a great level of extensibility. Really yeah. good stuff. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think uh, HTML5, JavaScript for extending uh, Office no longer need to be a com developer. I think that's uh, very exciting. And then uh, we're releasing uh, Android uh, SDK uh, for uh, developing against Office 365. That's now up on Git. You can go to GitHub and, and download that. Start developing your uh, Android app uh, today. We've also got uh, Windows Phone and uh, iOS libraries uh, uh, that, are, that are coming along. So we're really, uh, really taking the, uh, you know, the mobile first strategy uh, right. to developer platform as well. So you'll see that coming, and that was, was demonstrated here. This was all built on our Android SDK. Very cool. So that's about all the time we have for this show. But before we wrap up, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false, it's possible to grant an application read access scope to just calendar data for all users in an organization using OAuth and Office 365 REST OData APIs. So of course, you guys saw it all in action. It is true. You can scope and grant permission just at the calendar or just at the contact list using claims-based authentication. That's correct. So very cool stuff showing all how basically this unified developer model works across the stack, also across all the consumption endpoint devices to really give a level of extensibility for Exchange here in this case, but also uh, shared with SharePoint and everything else. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's been exciting to talk to you guys about this, and I hope you guys, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to come up and grab, uh, grab me after this session. So, of course, all this content, all the latest news can be found on the Office blog. We blog pretty much every day there. And also on the Garage series, Microsoft.com slash Garage. We have videos basically every Wednesday. Tune into that. And thanks for watching, everybody. Goodbye for now. <laughs>